Hello everybody, so now we have finished two weeks in this course on algorithms for big data and it's now time for us to take uh, take stock a little bit. Uh, we've learned a little bit about probability theory, we've looked at uh, things like Chernoff bounds and things like, uh, uh, but why exactly are we learning these uh, notions? And the key to this uh, lies in our understanding of what we mean by algorithms for big data. When is an algorithm a big data algorithm? And just to understand this, let's um, uh, contrast this with what we know uh, to be traditional algorithms. Uh, okay, what is a traditional algorithm? Well, let's, uh, we typically think of uh, a, a CPU that's executing an algorithm and uh, that CPU has access to some data uh, that's usually stored in the main memory. Um, so the main memory can be accessed at random locations. And uh, the main memory includes uh, the program that's executing on the CPU, the input data, the, the scratch uh, information that gets generated as the algorithm is executed, and the output data. Everything is included in the main memory. And moreover, typically when you run a, a traditional algorithm, you expect the answer to be correct. So let's look at uh, example. For example, if you want to compute the minimum spanning tree of a graph, then you expect the, gra the algorithm to actually generate a minimum spanning tree. Um, and the same can be said of various other algorithms. And uh, the, uh, over the last uh, 50 years, uh, we have a very uh, nice, rich set of uh, algorithms that have been uh, developed. Uh, and over the course of time, uh, some of the requirements have changed. And there is still a lot of need for traditional algorithms. It's, it's not like the traditional algorithms are no longer useful. Uh, but as uh, computer science and the applications and the world around us changes, uh, th there are new and interesting uh, algorithmic questions that are being asked. And this is inspired by various applications uh, that we broadly call big data applications. Uh, so what are these big data applications and what are these algorithms that are used to solve these big data applications? Well, uh, and, and what are the characteristics that we encounter? Well, the input data is typically too large to fit into the main memory. So the traditional view that the data fits into the main memory is no longer uh, necessarily true. And uh, it's not just one computer that uh, handles the data. Typically, it's a large data center that uh, processes uh, data. And because it's a large uh, data center, there are multiple servers. And the data is actually uh, broken into subparts and stored in multiple servers. And they have to interact with each other to uh, uh, solve problems. And uh, finally, uh, the data is um, often not allowed. Uh, you cannot access the data in traditional random access type of fashion. You, uh, you have some rules by which you can access the data. So as I mentioned, the data could be stored in a distributed setting. It could be stored in, um, in a cloud. Uh, and the only access you have is through some queries. Um, or as an example here, maybe the data is stored in such a manner that you can only access the data as a single pass through the data. So maybe you you, pass, you, you get an access to the graph, a large graph, as um, in some arbitrary fashion where you get one edge at a time. And you have to see these edges one edge at a time, and you have to answer something about the graph. Um, so that's one, one more example of a uh, way in which you can access the data. All of this uh, implies that the traditional model of algorithm is algorithm design is no longer uh, the only model that matters. Uh, there could uh, there could be a variety of ways in which we can define models of computing based on the specific architecture of the system, specific uh, application at hand, and so on and so forth. And of course, we uh, recall that in traditional algorithms, we require the answer to be always uh, correct. At least typically, that's our expectation. Um, but um, uh, let's think of a canonical modern application, searching in Google. <coughs> 
of course, we're all familiar with um, this uh, I feel lucky button that Google has. So if you type something uh, uh, very uh, prominent, so for example, if you type in uh, Narendra Modi, clearly the first link that you will get will be typically what you expect because it's a very prominent search uh, term. Um, but if you're searching for something less prominent, uh, then it's okay to be a little unlucky. You don't, you, you may, perhaps you don't require it to be the first uh, uh, outcome of your search. But with, let's say if it's within the first page, you're usually happy. So, uh, so in other words, you, your expectation is no longer as strict uh, as before in traditional algorithms. Um, and it's uh, a, a, a simple way to capture this is the, the phrase, it's sufficient if most of the time the output is good enough. So most of the time uh, kind of refers to uh, a sort of a probability theory type of uh, thing where you want it to be uh, correct with some good probability most of the time and you don't necessarily need the uh, output to be correct in the in the absolute sense but you just want it to be good enough a good approximation so uh, in in the search engine context uh, you want the, uh, the 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 outcome to be good enough in the sense that you there's the actual website that you're after it's good enough if that appears within the top say five uh, hits uh, and and moreover it's not like uh, every time you search for something it's always within the top five let's say 99 percent of the time you search for something and you what you're looking for is within the top five or within the first page that's great and Google is, uh, is an, it typically follows that sort of a paradigm where most of the time, 99% of the time, this the website that you're looking for is within the you know, in the first page. Of course, there's times when it's not in the first page, and it's uh, um, and uh, you know, uh, but that's something you're willing to live with, and that's the essence of big data algorithms. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there for probability theory and approximation ideas. That uh, need to be incorporated into the uh, algorithms but it's not like therefore just because the user expectation is a little bit uh, less uh, it doesn't mean that um, uh, you can start to I mean completely lose uh, control over the quality of the output uh, you still need to be careful to prove that with very good probability you get a very good answer um, and this is where uh, the theory that we are studying, the probability theory and uh, the various uh, algorithmic models will be helpful uh, in designing the right uh, type of uh, uh, algorithm. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, get started on um, some new uh, ideas, models and algorithms for big data.